Hey everyone in the YouTube world, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. I am an absolute Corvette fanatic. I love everything about all Corvettes, cheap to expensive, new to old. There's something in every Corvette from $2,500 to $100,000 plus dollars that I always find that I like about them. So recently I bought a 2005 Chevy Corvette convertible, triple black, six speed. That's a 405 horsepower, six liter V8 monster. Here's the kicker. It has a reconstructed title. It was crashed with 200 miles back in 2005. I'm gonna say that again. Somebody bought this car in 2005, crashed it, totaled it, and then had it reconstructed, and then fixed and repaired and retitled and put on the road. Well, I bought this car sight unseen. I bought it off photos and a very, very brief description. I don't know anything about it. I know that it does have 38,000 miles, but I haven't even seen it run yet. So follow me along with this video because I'm going to show you the entire car start to finish. How it shows up, it's showing up on the trailer today because I bought it out of state. And then what I need to do to get it fixed, cleaned, repaired, if it needs anything, I have no idea. And then ready for sale. Let's go. New toy showed up again today. pushing me off right now. So right off the bat it shows up not running. Loose terminal, hopefully that's all it was. Got a little bit of a loose hood light. Long tube headers on another vat. So right off the bat, the car wouldn't start. And if you look here, inside the glove box is a spot to manually override your keyless push to start. What's in here? What do we have here? Just a bunch of nuts and bolts. Man, this thing is... Here's a story. We have another new toy that showed up today, 05 Corvette convertible triple black six speed at Flying Wheels. Oh yeah, we still have the Ferrari for sale. Oh, we still have the Z06 convertible for sale. And hopefully this one's gone today, fixed roof coupe, long tube header straight pipe Z06. So we had a chance to go through our reconstructed title Chevy Corvette, it's up on the lift right now. Once again, we have straight pipes, no cats. But this Borla exhaust makes all the difference. So my Z06, 01 Z06 that was straight piped sounded just god awfully loud. This one, the Borla muffler, just makes this thing so much better to long tube headers and an AC belt is ripped. Actually, yeah, not ripped. It fell off because it wasn't put on. So with reconstructed title stuff, you never know what you're going to get. So if you look right in here, you will see that crank pulley is touching the power steering rack, literally touching it right there. You can see the crank pulley is touching the power steering rack. So the craziest thing that we've learned about this Corvette is that the crank pulley, I think, is off a truck because you can see there's no clearance and it's actually rubbing the power steering rack. It's not leaking, so it must have just recently been replaced. So here's a 5.3 out of a Suburban. Basically the same block, and you can see the dimensions are about the same. Uh, they're actually identical on the crank pulleys. But look at the offset. Look how deep that offset is. So I'm thinking that crank pulley on that car is off a Chevy truck engine, not an LS2 or LS6, not an LS6. Because that offset looks pretty, pretty deep. And what really sucks about it is this is a six hour freaking job. All data calls six hours for this. We're a day in already making progress. So I noticed when I was driving the car that the seat kept sliding back and forth and I thought it was just loose on the track. There was only one bolt holding each seat in and the bolts were in the glove box for it. So a few of the strange things that we found out is that the seat actually wasn't bolted in at all. I did 
I did buy the driver's panel here and the buttons here, but look at this. The seatbelt's not even buckled in. So I just noticed on the instrument cluster too, there's a little bit of, a, I don't know what that is, like it was broken and then glued or something. Someone's taking delivery of this bad boy today, so German is going through it and making it look really good, because I've been driving it. So we want to bring it back to as new as possible. It looks so good. Look at those shoes. Goodbye, my old friend. It's been fun. See you later, enjoy! So what does reconstructed title mean? Well, let me tell you, if a car is in an accident, if it's stolen, if it's in a flood, anything that could happen that could make the car lose its value more than the cost of repair. So if I have a $5,000 car that I crash and it costs $3,000 to fix, it's more than 50% of the cost of repair. If it's $1,000 to fix, the insurance company is gonna pay that $1,000 to repair it. But if it's 3,000, they're not, they're just gonna give you the $5,000 for your $5,000 car. Well, this Corvette, brand new was crashed so apparently it was hit right around here which is strange because you can't see it i don't see any strange body lines i don't even see any repaint it was done really really well so if you look inside here these buttons are all kind of like rubber coated and touching them over and over for 15 years has worn some of the rubber coating off so i'm going to show you what we normally do to all of these buttons typically take some gloss black paint and a paintbrush and I'll just go ahead and touch up all the spots. So there's actually kind of a quirky thing to this car that I didn't realize until just now. The, the battery has been dead every single morning when we come in and I can't figure out why because we test the battery and the ta battery's fine. Well if you look right here it says shift to reverse. So the guys haven't been putting it in reverse. So typically we pull it, look at the car just shut itself off. So typically we drive it into the garage at night in first gear, we leave the car in first gear and we shut the car off. Well, the car needs to be in reverse to actually shut off everything. So if it's not in reverse, it's not shutting itself off, which then in turn kills the battery. So it's a key fob, right? Keyless start, push to start. So what happens if the battery's dead in the key fob? Well, going into the glove box, you'll see right here, there's a spot for the key fob to go. Once it's in there, it's recognized by the car, you can turn the car on. That took a long time to figure out the first day it showed up. Okay, so I got in the car the other day, the top's up, the windows are up, I go to start it, the battery's dead. Well, it's an electronic door opener. The door latch is push button, but the battery's dead. How the heck do you get out of this car? I locked myself in the car. Well, if the battery's dead and you get locked in the car, why would that ever happen? Well, it happened to me. There is a latch right here that opens the door. So there's a door handle right there that lets you open the car door. Now check this out. I pulled the car fast because obviously it has a branded title. Going through it has six owners from Florida and Texas. Damage was to the left front corner with 140 miles on it. So somebody bought it brand new in 2005, <laughs> May 2nd, and then on May 15th, they totaled their car. So in just about two weeks, they totaled their car. <laughs> then it was second owner bought it. It was repaired and sold with 779 miles at Mole, Mole Chevy in Missouri. And then it gets better. So it goes to Florida. Then it goes to Texas. Well, if you guys remember, Texas had some massive floods. So if you'll see here in 2017, Texas had a flood. I think it was Hurricane Irma or Wilma or something. Water damage reported. So it was 
salvaged again because of a flood. So it has long tube headers, no catalytic converters, to Borla exhaust that sounds like an absolute animal. I love it. Love it. Listen to the pop. Ready? There it is. So fun to drive. Now I have this car listed at fifteen thousand dollars, fifteen grand for a thir thirty-eight thousand mile Corvette convertible. That's an absolute steal for this car. Typically, this should be twenty-five to twenty-eight thousand dollars. So I have it between ten and thirteen thousand dollars below book value, but it's because of the history. So a reconstructed title is a tough sell unless the price is right. But I have to buy it with that same thing in mind. So typically, I buy a reconstructed title for significantly less than I would normally pay for a regular titled vehicle. A brand new Corvette getting reconstructed or rebuilt or repaired, I'd assume would have to be done, not have to be, but would be done professionally and correctly. You never know though. So anyway, well the insurance company writes out a check to the bank for the balance on the lien, and then the difference goes to the owner. If you have no loan, no lien, you get a check for the entire amount. And then you can either buy the car back at a fraction of the cost and repair it yourself, or keep the money. And if you keep the money, the insurance company takes the car and they run it through a salvage auction for somebody else to buy and somebody else to repair on their own dime. And what happens is the purchaser of the car gets a certificate of salvage and it tells you what the insurance company actually totaled the car for. And all those things have to be repaired according to what the insurance company says needed to be done to make it roadworthy again. Once those repairs are done with receipts, with the cost of repairs, you take it to a state, in our state at least, we take it to a state trooper. The trooper inspects it, they inspect the receipts, they make sure it's done appropriately and that it's safe for the road again, and then they issue you a new title, a rebuilt title or a reconstructed title. And then forever, in any state, you can register the car and title the car in your name just like you would any other car. The only difference is on the front of the title, it will either say rebuilt or reconstructed title. That's the only difference. And then typically you'll get a little salvage sticker somewhere on your car. When you open the door, typically it's on the driver's door. Let's see if this has it. There is no decal anywhere saying that it's reconstructed. I know in my state you get a little decal on the door and you're not allowed to remove that sticker. So we finished this car for as much as we're going to do to it. So I'm going to give you a quick walk around of what we've done to it and the final product for us. Now salvage title, reconstructed title, rebuilt titles are always quirky. You never know what's done to it and you never know how the repair work was done. But you can see it does have 38,000 miles, which is great. So in 15 years, the car's only been driven 38,000 miles, which is either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. All the body lines are in great shape. I really like how they tinted these lenses. Going down all the body lines, everything is straight and all the gaps are perfect. They tinted this as well. The water falls in great shape as well as the convertible top. Wheels are all excellent. See that lower legs exhaust, blah, 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 blah. Here's the interior of the car. Here's where it was supposedly hit, but the gaps all line up perfectly. Oh, I see a little bit, ah, here we go. A little bit of respray here and some gloss coat in there as well. So this is where it was hit. No sanding marks. It was done really, really well aside from that though. Under the hood is a 405 horsepower LS2. I kept saying LS6. LS6 is the 5.7 in the 02 to 04 Z06. And LS2 is the six liter that's in these cars. You'll see long tube headers. Now I have this car listed for sale already and a lot of the people that aren't quite Corvette enthusiasts, they just want a Corvette, keep asking me if it's a power top. No, these come in a manual of top. They did not have a power top option. But you can see how easily it closes. You saw me push the button in the back and open it up, and this is how it locks in place. The previous generation just has two locks, one here and one here. Simple, it is extremely simple. It does not come with a power top, it's a manual top, but don't complain, don't be a baby, you can do it yourself with one hand. Now there are two reasons I cannot sell this car with a state inspection sticker. Number one being that it has no catalytic converter, so I cannot sell this car legally with a state inspection sticker because it will not pass emissions without catalytic converters. Now I could put catalytic converters in it, but it's going to run me about $1,000. And the new buyer might not want the catalytic converters because they might really like the way it sounds. 
And then the other thing, stopping you from getting a state inspection sticker, is the window tint. In the state of New Hampshire, you cannot have front window tint on your car. Zero percent. We can have them to the rear of the driver's and passenger seat, but you cannot have them in the front or on the front windshield. So here's the beautiful thing about this car. It's only flashing on the screen. It's not flashing in real life. It only has 38,000 miles. The dash isn't cracked. Everything is in good shape. But like I said, having a reconstructed title, there's always going to be quirky things. So there are things I had to touch up. There are things I had to replace. There are things I'm not gonna do at all because it is what it is. This is the car. And that's why it's $13,000 less than the next best car with this kind of mileage on it. All right, I had to put the top up because of my quarantine hair. I refuse to cut my hair during quarantine. Let's just see how long I can get this going. My wife absolutely hates it. But every day, the worse it looks, I don't know, I tend to like it more and more. So let's get going with the top up so I don't have the wind blowing in my hair. This car is so fun, so fun. It puts smiles on my face every time I drive it. It's a street legal race car. The AC blows cold, let's see if the radio works. Oh yeah. Everything works in this car. It tracks straight, it drives straight. So there are things you need to check if buying something with a reconstructed title. First of all, make sure it drives straight. Take your hands off the wheel and see if it pulls in either direction. Hit the brakes, the car steers straight in both directions. Then there are things you wanna check. Does it drive straight when accelerating? Let's find out. shimmy it doesn't shake that's a great sign now once we put it on the lift we're going to check the frame the subframe every body panel underneath and make sure it's straight not kinked or not bent in any place we don't want to see anything that's going to affect the structural integrity of the car that a car has had two different reconstructed titles or whatever to the history of having two reconstructed titles. It's insane. I've never seen that in my life. When you're on date night. Do you take the Nissan, the Ferrari, the Eagle Talon, or the Corvette? Or the minivan. Trick I question. Take minivan. You take the minivan because it's the safest, the most comfortable, the most reliable, and no one's going to pull you over in it. Video. Date night. Opinion of the Corvette. What's wrong? <laughs> Figure it out. Push that button. This? Yeah. That's so weird. You're just trying to pop the trunk? Here. Ow. Pop the trunk, Ow. open it up. So this car sold incredibly fast because it's only $15,000 and typically it should be around a $25,000 car but because of the title history I discounted it. I bought it discounted so I could sell it significantly discounted. So this is a 38,000 mile Corvette that looks like an amazing new Corvette. I mean, people can love this car and have pride in it still and buy it for $10,000 less than a normal Corvette. So a perfect example, I have a 2012 Grand Sport six speed coming in next week that I'm gonna ask around like 28,000 for with 53,000 miles. So $13,000 more than this one. And that's why I had so many people jumping on this. Facebook drove me absolute freaking insane because I was getting offers of eight and 10 all day, every day. And I know what the car is worth. Once your phone starts ringing as much as mine was, you know you're at the right price. And I knew it was gonna sell, so I stayed firm. 
or at least pretty firm. I sold it for $14,000 because I knew it needed tires and I didn't do tires. So it was one or the other. I was either gonna do the tires at 15,000 or let them do them at 14,000. Now we negotiated on a couple other items. This door wasn't opening on its own, which is typically this switch. So there's just a switch right here and you can see how easily it is two Phillips screws. So I replaced this switch for him. The seatbelt was unplugged. He, he was okay with not having the passenger controls. The driver's side controls were done. You can see here, we didn't do this either. Because the more we do, the more we're gonna have to charge. So yeah, we can do it or we can sell it for less. So either or, whichever the customer wants, if there's something that's really gonna bother them, I will gladly replace it for them like I did. So we did this door handle, I did the seat belt. You can see some swirl marks in it from our buffing. So we did a hand polish and then a spray wax on top of everything. And it's spring, so it's already getting pollen all over it. We did an oil change, we did uh, some coils and plugs, we did an injector, all kinds of stuff. Basically, if the car needed it, we did it. I wanna make sure it's safe for somebody. I wanna make sure it's reliable for somebody. I wanna make sure it's fun for somebody. Something really weird, I guess not that weird about it. I went out Saturday night with my wife on date night. It was low on fuel and it sounded a little tingy. And I noticed that the power just, well, the power was still pretty incredible. So I went to the gas station, I put super in it. Instantly, the ting went away. So clearly somebody had put regular gas in it when you need super. These cars are high performance engines, they need super. So if you have a Corvette, put super in it. You'll definitely, absolutely notice it. And I definitely, definitely did. Love that pop. That was a fun car. That was a fun car. And those are the cars that make me love my job. Right? Even you're smiling. Even German's smiling about it. Those are the cars that make me love my job. And we got a white one coming, 12 Grand Sport with 53,000 miles. More money, obviously, it's gonna be double the money, but it's double the car with a clean title. Hey everybody, if that was at all entertaining, informative, or fun for you guys to watch, make sure to subscribe down below, right here somewhere also, hit the yellow bell, get notifications every time we make a new video. Follow us on Instagram at flying underscore wheels.com, TikTok flying wheels, Facebook flying wheels. Thanks everybody, I'll see you later, adios.